Hello, everyone. Uh, oh. Hi. hi. Oh, what's this? Two Mahoyo streams in a row. We did it. We did it. We're back. Hello, VT. Hi. Okay. I don't think we've achieved this in a while, actually. Hell, two streams in a row, honestly, has been, uh, is, is a milestone. And one of them was the really, like, the last one was a really long one, too, because the last time we did two Mahalia streams in a row, they were both, like, an hour. Yeah. Hey, Soil. Hey, Pars. Hey, Hello. Hello. I'm so fucking excited. And I'm so ready to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can do it. So I guess you cried like an hour after the stream. Guess who that was? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Captain History, what's up? It's been a while. Hello, Captain. I am so fucking... <laughs> I'm so ready to cry. I'm so ready to cry. <laughs> yeah. I cried so much. I cried so much last night. Oh my god. All right. We do need to get V Vans up though. So can you uh, share your screen with me? Okay. While uh, talking about how much you love Mahoyo. Yes. Hold on. Uh, let me just actually do that. <laughs> oh god. Also, we're dealing with uh, really high temperatures over here, so. We are not. We are not dealing with really high temperatures over here. Well, my room is. Like, if I if you open my door, you can feel the heat yeah. just radiating, radiating out of it, and I don't know why. Probably because my computer is effectively just a big yes. heater. <laughs> uh-huh. That would be it, yes. That's annoying. All right, so go live. Can you see? We're we're doing this because Discord just keeps randomly crashing whenever I screen share, so we have to find ways around that. Yep. Okay, now bring up the event. Has anyone else had that problem? Okay, so Oh, good. Okay. Is it working? Is it working? I'm confused. Is it working? <laughs> okay, so I... that's What do I have to do to make it work? <laughs> What the hell did you do? What? No, 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 click, click those. A. What are you doing? Don't click action. the A. What are I'll, you doing? I was, I was trying to drag it. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, um, all right. Outgoing stream. Bus A1. Uh, try, try playing some music. Uh, all right. I'll just, I'll just play. Or, or rather, are you, are you listening to any, any track right now? There now, now there's there's something playing here. I'm just, yep, I'm I can just hear playing that. The... Wait, you can hear it? Oh wait, so we didn't uh -huh. set up anything. We're actually just fine. Cool. Now start virtual camera. Oh, let me actually just turn the switch on. All right, we might be able to start like in a second here. Actually. <laughs> uh, come on. Switch controller, please turn on. Does it have any lights to say that it's on? Oh, I think I just felt it vibrate, actually. Uh, yeah, the, the bottom has lights. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Oh, Discord, Discord froze. Cool, cool. I'm glad we did this. I can still see. I can still see on Discord. So don't, don't fuck it up yet. Don't just screw it up yet. I can't click anything on Discord, though. That's okay. Hold on. We started after we get this fully working, okay? Well, no, like I can't. I, I literally can't even turn the virtual camera on. It's just no turning virtual camera on is an OBS thing. Like this? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, I guess go into studio mode. Okay. Go to the VN. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the, the all right, probably this, don't bother updating the software yet. This is the technical difficulty to end all technical difficulties. <laughs> no, it's fast. Just 
find the uh, find the game. A uh, video capture device at the bottom. Oh, I think Discord is crashing. Yep, there, there it goes. There it goes. There it goes. <laughs> oh my god! What did they do to Discord? I need to like try reinstalling Discord after this. It's been just not working right for a while now. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> oh my god. They're giving How did the call go? It didn't. <laughs> it didn't. Hello? Hi? Hi? Hello? Oh. Hello. There. Hello? Oh, okay. there we go. So the thing is, okay. so, we don't need to use the OBS virtual camera. We can just do this, by the way. Yep, that was the plan. But um, I do need to... I, I do want you to, uh, to... To just bypass Elgato entirely. Just... Uh, well, Elgato isn't running right now. Yeah. Wait, what the hell? Why is it? Why is it only showing the VN to me? Uh, because uh, I'm pulling from the same camera source that OBS does. What? It has like a virtual webcam that I can just use. Oh no! Dude, show me the stream. Are you okay? Okay. Is... I want to see the whole stream. Because I also, I've stated before, I want to be able to see you, too. Like, your VTuber moving around in real time. Okay, in that case, there. And it that also case? shows me the chat on the same screen. There we go. That is perfect. Okay, anything else? Or now uh, just right-click. Uh, uh, so you just need to make sure that uh, the audio is monitor and output. Okay, so then that's, uh, I usually go down here to, uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, let's do, where is it? Wait, where is the audio settings? Right click, right click the fucking, the, the, uh, the audio bars. <laughs> It's not showing up in the audio bars now. Okay, share your screen again. Even if it kills Discord. No, I don't trust. The, the just thing do is, it. There's, there's usually a... There's usually like a, a audio thing for it down here, but it's not there now. Um... Oh, it's because we're in studio mode. It's because we're in studio mode. <laughs> We don't need to be in studio mode. We don't need to be in studio mode anymore. Show the scuff off. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I got it now. I got it now. Uh, capture device, monitor, and output. All right. I think we're good. And then just uh, monitor or whatever. How does that work? And then right click the uh, full the screen projector. or window projector. Or right click and make windowed projector. And then you can just full screen that. And there you go. Okay, we're good. Goodbye, Elgato. We don't need you anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Elgato. There's a few roundabout elements to what we're doing here, but... This should hopefully go a lot better. Alright, I think we're, we're ready to start the big, the big chapter. Yeah, just one thing real quick before that, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, I love you. Oh, that's good seeing you stiffen in real time. Okay, there we go. Hey! <laughs> so cute. I love you so much. I want I you to look you at so your much. VTuber. Look at your VTuber. Uh, uh, oh my god, it's <laughs> obvious. It's just obvious. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you, <laughs> I love you so much. Okay. All right, all right. Let's 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 start. All right, let's let's get into this because 
Wow, last time. Wow. Last time. Just remembering the uh, kitten of the tiger. <laughs> I cried for a while after this. <laughs> <laughs> they do, don't they? <laughs> they do. All right. All right. I mean, basically, <gasps> I'm I'm just redeeming it myself. Because <laughs> I basically want it. have infinite channel points. No. Oh, okay. Wait, it's still a board I mean, here. It's probably oh, yeah. It's probably Vincent. What? Wait. If stagnant it's water, sits water. Out. If it sits out for a whole day? <clears throat> Doesn't, like, bacteria build up on it or something? Not, not over, like, a day. Okay. Alright. The only thing is, like, if you have, like, a water bottle or something... Or it's like a closed, moist environment? <coughs> no, it's not. But yeah. Alright, let's get into this. Night of the Witches 1. Oh, I am not ready for this. <laughs> I love the title cards here. Oh, look at that fade. Uh, should look there be music? Fade. Look at the fade. Should there be? Uh, can you can you hear it? Can can chat hear it? There is quite is too quiet. It's it's really quiet. Like it's normally quiet, you know. It's a quiet track. Sajid returned to his apartment on foot, as per routine, under a blanket of clouds in the night sky. The rusty stairs of his apartment building clanged with each step. Out of the corner of his eye, he could see bicycles parked by the apartment building's outer wall. He debated the pros and cons of a bicycle. How much easier life would be versus the expense? The convenience versus the necessity, but in the end, decided one was not right for him just now. Catching the bag of apples under his arm, he took out the key to his residence. Bike sure would have been convenient. Yep, nope, I'm not, not like I'm not getting that. that. Why are you not getting it? I'm getting it. <clears throat> Alright, where's where's where are you monitoring to? Oh, probably the wrong thing. Can you can you Hey, what's up, Bullet? <laughs> Hi Bullet, here you're with... here for the scuff. The technical difficulties. Okay. Uh, it's I want to take care of it to... real fast before we get the hell into it's it. It's monitoring to uh, the uh, the desktop audio, like voice meter. What the hell? So you don't hear. Anything? And you're you're getting it. Can you can you share, share your screen sp again? For some reason, are you getting it now? I I heard me. Do you still hear yourself? Oh, uh, the trash. Um. Oh. <laughs> I never figured out. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. I forgot. Because my Hoyo was good. My Hoyo is so fucking good. Alright, do you hear it now? I turned it up just so you can maybe be able to hear it. No. What? Okay. Seriously. seriously. Share, share screen and open to it's VPN. It's gonna crash again. That's okay! We can just restart it! Okay. 
There's a part of me that I'm really sorry, just wants to buy the Steam version at some point, honestly. <laughs> that wouldn't solve this problem. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> All right. So what? Wait, 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 wait. Where's Where's the audio going into for the the switch? Here. <laughs> oh my God! It's not being sent to me at all. Wait. How, how do I? Click A one. Click A one. There. Do you have it now? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, you can cool. close the close the stream now. Close the uh, the Discord stream before it crashes again. Yeah, <laughs> we we will we will update you on the trash dog. How to get the? Ch <laughs> we we need a resolution. It's true. All right, all right. There we go. All right, you ready? Getting back into it here. All right, you ready? Yep. Okay. A bike sure would have been convenient, but it's not like he tilted his head in confusion. I totally get it. More and more, he found himself preoccupied with such random thoughts when the real issue at hand was deciding what to do with the apples he had received. He placed the paper bag by the sink and switched on the lights. It was just after 10 in the evening. With the end of term exams just around the corner, he had come home an hour earlier than usual. As he made it back, for, as he made back for the kitchen to pick up one of the apples to snack on, he found an envelope stuffed in his mail slot. Oh, that picture of the air conditioning is mocking me. <laughs> <laughs> the envelope had no name, return address, or stamp. Inside was a single piece of paper that only had the sender's name and a short message. It read, <笑><笑>あの、<笑> There's something important we need to talk about tonight. Nope, that's... <coughs> I guess my, my fucking self-hypnotism for Alco is... It's not this. It's this. <coughs> <laughs> <coughs> There's something important we need to talk about tonight. It's important, so I'll be waiting. Needless to say, keep this a secret. A concise set of orders, neatly written. It was signed, Elko Alzaki. She had been considered enough to enclose a detailed map of the meeting place. Puzzled, he cocked his head to the side and then headed out the door. Where's but what about the, the apples? Afterward. Hey, apples. <laughs> I'll never make that joke again, ever. Yeah. Upon the room's sole tenant leaving the premises, the envelope burst into flames. Oh! Yeah, that makes sense. And evaporated without a trace, as though it had never existed in the first place. Oh, if you want to see scuff some of her older streams, holy shit. <laughs> By the late 80s, Japan's post-war economic boom had somewhat stabilized, and the city experienced a period of steady growth. I was not expecting history here. <laughs> <laughs> the city's modernization marched on, and the Japan Railway's train station, a symbol of the new era, neared completion. In Misaki's neighboring town of Yashirogi, a new symbol of its Owen was about to be born. What? 
Yashiro huh. Bead Bread in Kitsi Land. It was Misaki's <laughs> worst investment. <laughs> what? Years later, it would be dubbed as the fool's gold of the economic bubble, a relic of a bygone age. What is this? Wait, is this... Wait, The city lacks aspiration and sophistication. Oh god, yeah. The, there's definitely a mandatory rewatch of K&K after this, 100%. <laughs> years ago. Was this like an amusement park? Oh yeah, yeah, the amusement park! That's right! I forgot! <laughs> I forgot! Uh... uh... Is there any way that we can refund that actually? Sorry, just cause like, uh, yeah. you kinda wanna keep like, the reading of things actually yeah. serious. Yeah, not, not no for, no harsh feelings, just uh not for the, uh these streams. And yeah, you can refund it through uh project and refund. Thank you. Yep. yep there you go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it, no I, harsh I'm, feelings. I kind of want to do a thing that will like toggle certain things off depending on the stream. Because yeah, these streams are very yeah, differently yeah. vibed than other ones. Yashiroki's renowned Toki... Tokitsu? 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 Tokitsu. You, you were actually Tokitsu. getting it right for a bit. On your own Tokitsu Baking I Company I ran just... factories all across the nation. Its proprietor was a middle-aged gentleman, then age 56. By the name of Yurihiko Tokitsu, no, known affectionately yep. by the most as Topan. Topan, Topan, Topan. Nope, it's Topan. Topan. You got that right. It's uh, because it's Topan. it's generally <laughs> built in uh, consonant vowel. That's that's all the syllables in Japanese is consonant vowel for the most part. I'm slowly learning everyone. <laughs> Other than ending himself. in the n sound occasionally. He took it upon himself to begin development on a realist on a on. Rice range just inserted real in front of the state. Take, yep. <laughs> he just, took just it take a... upon himself <laughs> yeah. to begin development on an estate on the outskirts of Yashirogi and broke ground on a recreational wonderland that he hoped to be the pride of Misaki City. The long awaited opening came in 1981. After three years of investment, this local amusement park, full of kinds of hopes and dreams, began its short lived tenure. That's so sad. It covered more than <laughs> 85 square acres. Its magnificent merry-go-round dazzled all who passed through the park's gates. <laughs> <laughs> I love this music describing the amusement park. Isn't it great? <laughs> yeah. Just... Well, remember what's about to happen in this amusement park. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> this place... This is supposed to be a place of joy! <laughs> yeah. It's a roller like, coaster twisted and turned about the edges of the park like a writhing Japanese dragon. <laughs> oh my god. I, I just. Nasu is. Japanese the best. dragon is a weird. I don't know, again, just from my perspective, that's a weird descriptor of it, because it's like. Why specifically Japanese? Like that's that's a that's a common type of dragon in like a bunch of uh, Eastern. Uh... Its Ferris wheel, hacked beyond necessity with gimmicks, was said to have tested the limits of modern engineering. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking voice. It's perfect. Fused with everything an amusement park could oh. ever need. I just realized that shot up there is a Ferris wheel. It's it's like a, a low angle. It's a angle fairy's Ferris. wheel. It's a fairy's wheel. <laughs> I activated the fairy brain. Old Yurihiko looks upon his creation and smiled. 
only boosting his confidence was the fact that its grand opening was staged during a period of prosperity, the springtime of the world. But, in spite of this, they splendidly miscalculated the balance between aspirations and sophistication. Its mascot, Kitsy, was poorly designed and appeared like a cheap knockoff. Is it that cat thing that keeps showing up? I think so. It's, it's, it's Kitsy, right? It's like that cat thing with like the little kitty face. I keep seeing it. Oh, everywhere. you mean in Tight Moon? Yeah. I can neither affirm nor deny that. <laughs> I keep seeing it, and we saw it in uh, HA, and I keep seeing it all over Twitter. <laughs> The park was stuffed to the brim with bread stands. I have bread now. Even its impossible to navigate near me seemed out of date from the start. There are no dreams to be had at Kitsy Land, only nightmares shot only nightmares stopped higher. Numerous trade magazines lambasted Kitsy Land's shortcomings <laughs> and customer attendance <laughs> declined! Was, were you just a, a thim Sean Connery for a second? There are no dreams to be had at Kitchyland, only nightmare shatire. Yeah, basically. <laughs> there was even an incident where a oh. six-year-old strayed from his mother, had an accident, and nearly died. Oh. oh. Oh, well, at least the kid's okay. Yeah. 1986, five years after yeah. the park opened. Yeah, the situation she had grown has drawn out her, uh, please no harm to children, uh, instincts. Mm -hmm. A little bit. The situation had grown from bad to worse, and the park was hemorrhaging money. On top of any, everything, Yurihiku. <laughs> Y Yurihiko. Oh. <laughs> Fight of 89? <laughs> no, 86. Or, or 86. My brain fucked it. <laughs> or, was, or was, was, it, 89 wasn't even one of them, right? But there was like a bite of 87? I don't know. I never fucking, uh... Wait, what is this a reference to? I don't get it. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's. When one of the animatronics bit like half of a kid's head off. Cool! That's Like that's twice? Great. I just realized I, I don't think don't I can play that game. I don't fucking know, but the lore sounds really inconsistent from outside of the... I mean, I don't on think it's shown on screen. On top of everything, Yurihiko, who had bet everything on the success of mascot Kitsi, retired, and Kitsi Land's operations were officially in trouble. <laughs> and thus, admits the scorn of nearly all residents of the area, and it... Misaki City's one and only amusement park. What's more, perhaps best described as a footnote to this debacle, the self-proclaimed partisan artist who not par 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 how do you say Parisian that? Parisian artist Parisian. Who You know what that means? No. What does it mean? It means he's from Paris. I have a word or, for or that. Or rather, not it's, it's or like. Yeah, that that's what that's Parisian. It it's the same as like Minnesotan. Like, Fair enough, you honestly. I am. Yeah. It just I sounds so close way to Canada cooler. that we have bagged milk here. <laughs> yeah. For not for long. Quick trip is is uh discontinuing them. That is of course Quick Trip with a K. But yes. Anyway. Not to be confused for Quick Trip with a Q. Which is Parisian artist who designed the mascot Toki Julich? 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 Toki Julich was said to have snapped his brush in mourning over the closure of the park. There's just something so haunting about like an abandoned amusement park. I don't know what it is. It's just. I mean, I think I kind of know. It's like... It's all the children's hopes and dreams. A place of joy that has just been, like... That has just fallen apart by the wayside to the cruel, cruel nature of 
reality. And of course, by reality, I mean capitalism, but most people just consider that to be reality. Da -da 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 -da. Communism! Fuck! <laughs> Dead fantasy. Yeah, yeah kind of. Because it's just like, it's a place that's supposed to be full of bright lights and like happy people and... It's just, instead it's just nothing, the like plants have slowly overtaken everything. All the colors are faded, it's just, it's the perfect setting for something like this, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Especially considering, yeah, <laughs> especially considering, uh, Shizuki's innocent nature and that analogy earlier. You almost said Shizuki, didn't you? I am all the magic. Yeah, no, that's such a good. Because, yeah, like all the lights and stuff is like magic. Returning to the present. It was midnight, and the kitsy land of today was the shadow of its former glory. The thing is, I, I'm, I'm sad I didn't bring this up as the place. It could that makes sense. Yeah. Like a doll, and been in the corner of a toy box, the lonely park was illuminated only by the light of the town that continued to live around it. Naruhodo. So that's what happened. Sojiro closed the Yashirogi guidebook that he had picked up on the way here. <laughs> oh. That was my guidebook! Tell the said yeah. hi! <laughs> It was all from a oh, guidebook. That's I, incredible. Yeah. That's pretty fucking good, yeah. The story of its history was almost difficult to believe, but he supposed this is what the people referred to as entropy. Entropy. Not entropy, but... Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, like, man, that guidebook sure sounds like it was written by Nasu, but then I realized, no, wait, that's just how everyone in this fucking universe talks. <laughs> because they're all written by Nasu. Like, honestly, it's only natural that they would talk like that, you know? True. If I get in the right headspace, I can just talk like a Nasu character. <laughs> the park's front gate was unlocked. When he worked here the previous time, the iron fence was locked shut with a rusty chain, but the chain was nowhere to be seen. And the gate left ajar. By the way, that's nothing but praise for Nasu's writing. <laughs> it's so fucking good. Following the map drawn in the letter, Sujiro quickly made his way inside. <sighs> it sounded urgent, but to meet this late at night, what in the world mm. could she want? I do have one note for your performance there. Yeah? He is completely unconcerned. He's too innocent to be worried. That's a good point. He's just genuinely confused. It sounded urgent, but to meet this late at night? What in the world could she want? Could she want? There you go. Sajiro complained. Quite out of character for him. <laughs> it was probably because, in spite of... In spite of his naivete, naive, naivety, naive. Yep. Or naivete. So, naivete is it's how a... how I see people say it. So that's where my brain went. Naivete. Even if he knew that something was amiss. Or even, even he, he knew. knew but yeah, it's also look at that sprite in front there. <gasps> look at that sprite in front there. That's a sprite. That's a sprite. Oh my god. That's a sprite of him, I think. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to make it out. <laughs> through the, though the park was abandoned, this was still trespassing. Unlawful entry, larceny, burglary, burglary. These were certainly not things, or perhaps crimes, that Sojiro was proud to do, but... <laughs> Sorry, I can't pay you any money. 
Really sorry for coming in for free. Oh, it was that. Once it was again. that. It was, it no, was the close up yeah. of the. It was the close up of yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, just uh oh okay it, but yeah just once again like he's not like he's not he doesn't sound broken up about it right he's just like stating it matter of factly oh so kind of channel the other side of me a little bit more okay a little bit more but just, just like a little bit <laughs> innocently though the innocence is important that's the most important thing money the real reason his conscience is gnawing at him <laughs> he clapped his hands in apology towards the statue of Kitsy. <laughs> Every time I'm just like, oh, that's so cute. Then I just oh, think about the scene dying. and then my heart breaks a little more. <laughs> oh, it's because he's like a child. <laughs> just like a child. It's like... It's like uh, when you like... When you, like, uh, heat up glass and then cool it down really fast and it cracks. That's what's happening to my heart right now. <laughs> he clapped his hands in apology towards the statue of Kitsy, on whose eyes the paint had begun to aptly dissolve. Sajiro passed the mascot bleeding red paint from its eye sockets and began to walk and walk the night park, or to the night park. That's a very Nasu line right there, isn't it? Yup. Oh, listen to that. <laughs> oh, good shit. The building's colors had faded. The collection of machines was rusted. The man-made residents no longer felt, passage, felt, felt the passage of time. Even the ghosts themselves could not endure the disparity between this forsaken place and its previous grand stature. It was like a fossilized dream. Good line right there. Oh. These were the ruins of a paradise both created and abandoned by man and reality. The economy had stabilized and the standard of living was on the rise. Nobody was overly concerned with the future. These were the remains of a wild and exciting era. His Wait, breath what? turning to... Huh? It said the late 80s. Does that mean... That, that implies that this isn't taking place in the 80s? It might be like the early 90s. Yeah, I was gonna say, is this actually the 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 90s version of Mahoyo? Like they got rewritten to be 90s. His breath to fit in with the the new timeline. His breath turning to white wisps before him. Sojudo continued through the abandoned amusement park. Though void of human presence, this is not nearly as frightening as the darkness deep in the mountains. I, it, I mean. Oh, 1989. Okay. Okay. The very edge of the 80s. City suburbs can take in many different forms, but Kitsy Land was unusual as an for an amusement park, in so much as it has been built adjacent to a residential district. Oh, I thought I thought uh, I saw yesterday. I don't remember who oh, it was said. Oh, uh, it was Suki, I think. No, no, no. For for the new version of Suki, like to line up, uh, that Mahoyo was moved. I think it was Suki that was moved. Well, yes. Okay. The park was surrounded by a forest, yeah. but. Even that, ultimately, was man-made. It was no different from the curtains on the classroom window. Okay. If you were to scale the iron fence encircling Kitsy Land and, the bra and break through the 20 yards of af forested trees, yeah, yeah. 
he can make it back to the familiar townscape. Though the amusement park tended to arouse dread in the city folk, to Sojiro, it was little different from the commotion and terror of downtown. That's true, isn't it? It's all unfamiliar. <gasps> oh god, the fence. The fence. I guess that's it. Or I guess that's it. The central plaza was as silent as a grave. According to the map, the meeting spot was west of here. Waiting for Sojiro at his destination was a rugged, imposing, magnificent castle, towering before the backdrop of the cloudy night sky. Even for an abandoned park, it was still a remarkable structure. If the roller coasters and the ferris wheel were loud, intense attractions, this was, in comparison, quiet and easygoing. It was one of Kitsuland's three iconic structures, and, in a way, the wicked fortress that guided this paradise down the path of closure. Generally speaking, amusement park mazes generally fell into one of two categories. A labyrinth, which, which disorients its visitors with its sheer size, and a house of mirrors, which disorients visitors with optical illusions. Oh, that's where they were mentioning yeah, she's the mirrors. Doing a house of mirrors. That's why Alco said she was going to go to the house of mirrors. Many of a labyrinth's guests enjoyed the brief sense of adventure that it afforded. Over the years, however, it would be usurped by the ever-increasing thrills of new attractions. Such is the way of all trends, the curse of fads. The new must give way to the newer. On the other hand, the House of Mirrors was a time-honored, beloved staple. Even within the confines of a classroom's dimensions, well-placed mirrors and well-directed light could both perplex and delight its visitors. After figuring in cost of maintenance, a well-designed house of mirrors could far outlive its labyrinth brethren. Even if both types faded into obscurity, they would remain a staple of what constituted an amusement park. However, that didn't mean that combining them would produce double the fun. Oh, they didn't. <laughs> Labyrinth of mirrors. Together, they transformed from entertainment into an uncanny realm from which those who dared step in could never leave. Realm? That's horrifying. I never want to go in there. <laughs> Realm? Realm. 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 <laughs> Realm. But like seriously, that's actually horrifying. Yeah. I would just, just break through the mirrors. It's fine. It's fine. In a similar sense. Kitsy's Mystery Tour Castle was the park's very own other world. Indeed, 5% of visitors ended up requesting staff assistance to get out. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great! Modeled after European castles, it was greater than a football field in length, and the interior was further split into three floors. Two floors above ground and one below, lined with mirrors from top to bottom, equal parts complex and vast. The maze demanded at least 30 minutes from even, even from veterans. One visit was all it took to be struck by... I don't know how to pronounce that phobia, but I have it. Catoptrophobia? <laughs> Catoptrophobia. Catoptrophobia. 
catoptrophobia. Catoptrophobia. It's a bit of a tongue twist. Catoptrophobia. Just, just slow it down. Catoptrophobia. 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 <laughs> For hours. It was this labyrinth that now stood in Sojida's way. ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
Nie, nie. So it was looking for Olgato and uh, it's gone. So she just stopped yeah, abruptly oh, at okay. the entrance to the, to the House of Mirrors. Tokoro de Aozaki, so not Tokoro de Nani Sterunda. Oh my god, look at the look on his face! It's just like, hey, what, what's up? What's going on? By the way, why are you over there, Aozaki? He called out, turning back toward the plaza. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, that was not the noise I was expecting to hear. What? What is going on? What is going on? <laughs> also, I'm, I'm, now that we're back to streaming, I'm taking my uh, estrogen on stream. So, because of, that is the same Good. time. So I can remember to do it at the same time every day. Yes. You need to do that. Just fun fact, uh, hormones should be taken at the same time to avoid things. <laughs> okay, there we go. Alright, let's keep going. <laughs> sound bang out as if someone had dove behind a garbage can and it fell to the ground in haste. <laughs> Is she dumpster diving? No, she's well, hiding. Well, I guess sort of to hide, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a short silence ensued. Wait, did she not get in position yet? She was in position outside, I guess. For a moment, the abandoned park returned to its previous hush. Oh my god, wait, no, I just realized what happened. He spotted her. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why, I just assumed that he wouldn't notice her if she was hiding. <laughs> well, yeah, she probably had some methods of hiding. Oh my god, wait, is he immune to magic? That's a theory. Shizuki is immune to magic. He's unaffected by it. Remember what they were saying before, though, about like how bounded fields will basically make you briefly invisible, except to people that like can feel bounded fields, because if they feel them, it makes you stick out like a sore fucking thumb. Yeah, I guess that's true. It's, it's just also going off of the fact that, like, he was invisible. He was invisible earlier. Resigned to her have been, to her having been exposed, the girl appeared from her hiding place. <laughs> just like, hey, Alko. Oh my god! New outfit! That's the outfit! That's from the, the mage outfit! Yeah! <laughs> I just she saw was that, wearing like... that under her puffy coat. I, I saw that through squinted eyes because I was trying not to see anything and I was like, is that mean? Is that mean? <laughs> <laughs> of course it's not mean! <laughs> Although I don't really blame myself for thinking that for half a second. <laughs> I can't. I can't blame myself for thinking that for half a second. Yeah. No, what, what was our old bit oh. that uh, realism absolutely loathed? Uh, three characters. <laughs> His voice. Oh, what is this song? What is this song? It's good. Okay. Also, can we just look at this background art for a second? Look at that. Look at all this. Yeah. It's so good. Well, go actually, look at the background, though. Yeah. Because you no, can, no. remember? Huh? Oh, right. Oh, God. Sorry, just... That, like, face. 
in the middle of the like left hand like building area. I think it's a jack in the box. What? Or it's coming out of like a, a trash bin or something. I'm I I'm not wearing my glasses. Maybe that would help. I'll just in send the it middle left screenshot. side. I'll just send it because I can do that now without Discord fucking dying. Look oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. It's terrifying. Like the, the clock face hand, yeah. the clock face face. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so eerie. Good shit. His voice died in his throat as he took in the sight of the girl's familiar face and unfamiliar attire. This Alko, with her long hair flowing in the breeze, was different from the Alko that so on you. Mage Alko. The resolute stance and posture she took exuded the strength of her will. She stared directly at him with a sharp-eyed, piercing gaze. That was on purpose, by the way. Look at that. Her eyes were glowing with a dim phosphoric light, enough to give Sojido pause that he might be hallucinating. An icy coldness and a girl's strength. Sojido lacked a sense of danger, but the sense of impec or imbalance caused even him to feel the malice in the air. It was as though the Yukiona spirit of folklore had climbed out from a ghost story and appeared here in reality. Oh, the ice woman, by the way. Mm-hmm. Aosuke. Instinctively, Sojiro took a step back. The fact that even Sojiro... Holy shit. He can feel that she's there to kill him. Surprised, he was starting to feel concerned. An unpleasant premonition rose to the surface, bringing with it a sense of anxiety. In spite of this, he felt obligated to honor urban etiquette by seeing if she was all right. Ah, nothing would hurt her more. <laughs> It's just the exact lens to just hurt as much as possible. Did something happen to you? From the looks of it, I am... Um... How would you feel if a kitten that you were about to have to put down uh, started mewing at you and... Go ahead and increase the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. <gasps> okay. Alright, let's keep Okay. Um, how do I voice that line? Yeah. I think there's just a little... A little Without acknowledging him, Alko took a step forward. Her figure, this atmosphere. So I should have found himself recalling a recent memory. To a bear. Not the bear. Oh. He's realizing it was Alko. It was Alko. Or Alko Ozaki. Twisted and nodded apprehension melted away and was replaced with a glowing realization. Yep. It wasn't Toko, it was Alko. <laughs> the girl before him was very similar to someone he had seen before that night in the park, though he had only seen her from behind. With increasing certainty causing him to swallow nervously, 
He noticed that they might as well very well been identical. You asked me what I was doing. Well, it's exact. <clears throat> you asked me what I was doing. Well, it's exactly what it looks like. I was waiting for my prey to pass by. Once you went inside, I was going to follow and cut off your only route of escape. Alko said, perturbed by the swift change in plans. I don't like sneak attacks. I came to the right place. Sojiro was mightily relieved that he had not got to the wrong place. Sojiro. What? What? What the hell? Oh, my, oh. my audio cut completely out. Did you, you... You missed me laughing my ass off at him just being like, Oh, I came to the right place. I came to the right place to get killed. <laughs> oh, Sojiro. Just like, oh my god, I thought I was going in the wrong direction for so long, you have no idea, Elko. Here... I'm just glad I didn't leave you hanging. <laughs> and I'm here to kill me, but... I was unclear like, whether... Like, kill me all you want, I just do not want to make a social faux pas. It was unclear whether he felt confident about dealing with what that was to come... With what was to come. Or had simply failed to grasp the hopelessness of the situation. Alko ignored his obtuse response and continued. You know, you know, Shizuki. Just like anyone else, some people get on my nerves. And some people I just really hate. But the funny thing is, my enemies are never the people on my shit list. Cold emotion burned in her eyes. Her feet had already moved one step closer to Sojiro. Sojiro's sense of foreboding was growing stronger, wondering if what he sensed was bloodlust. He retreated another step. Continuing as so, they maintained a distance of just 15 feet. As far as I can recall, I've never thought of someone I didn't like as an enemy. God, that's such a good line. As it happens, I've even had enemies that I liked. And the reason is simple. Look at that spray. <laughs> that smile. That. Right down oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the title of the stream until there's obviously a line that, that takes it. Yeah. She held her right arm out. The light about her was no illusion. It's simple, really. Look at this. It's simple, really. Yeah. Anyone who throws me out of whack is my enemy. Her arm moved again. was instantaneous. <gasps> okay. 
Oh, my heart skipped a beat there. <laughs> Something shot past Sojiro in the blink of an eye, missing him by just a, a foot to his left. <laughs> oh, oh my god, his face! Hey, you could really hurt someone with that. You shouldn't be using that. What? Hey. Before his eyes, a blue light, something akin to a fireball, had ignited from nothing. He finally understood what was happening. Oh, listen to this song. Wait a second. I've seen one of those before. Or wait a second, I've seen one of those before. She ignored his dim-witted reaction. Did you really so? Damn. I missed. Alko muttered, muttered to herself. The fist-sized hole of blue light. The blue light made in the house of mirrors crackled and smoldered. A shot like that could easily cave in a human skull in addition to burning it to a crisp. Ah, <sighs> <sighs> I'd have to kill myself if Alice saw me miss at this range. But you get it now. Right? This is it for you. There won't be a second chance. Sojuro backed away swiftly. Things were beyond comp incomprehensible. He was close to losing the ability to think at all. make out was the figure of the dependable student council president, or at least what he thought was the president, and the memories of the park that night two days ago. He never experienced anything like this, though most people living in a civilized country would have never seen anything like it either. A lethal weapon that could kill with nothing more than the pull of a finger had a way of suspending the ability of its target to determine between to determine between not just good and evil, but dreams and reality, past and future. And the more peaceful someone's life had been, the stronger that suspension was likely to be. And it's, in it's interesting because guns also kind of fit that description, huh? That's, that's why I laughed, yeah. is because that's literally the description of a gun as well. All that one could think about was the fact that they were alive at that very moment. It was as if it was an unwritten character. It was as if he was an unwritten character on a blank piece of white paper. There was no before, there was no after, there was only what came next. This is a very common thought process for anyone staring about down the barrel of a gun. Yep. Oh, don't bother. It's pointless. That was a really good read. But feel free to air your grievances. It's a killer's duty to listen to her victim's last words. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> saying it was pointless, she made it sound more like she would not listen to what he had to say. To say. However, Sojiro was in such a state of shock that it did not even enter his mind to speak of. All he knew, all he knew for reasons unknown, is that the girl in front of him wanted him dead. 
嘘つきにも程がある。Oh my god, so c h i l l You could have told me, Toby Maru. Toby Maru no baga. Nani ga son na ikimono wa inai da. Jisai iru janai ka kon na obake mi tai na no ga. Oh! You said that no such thing exists. Well, how about now, idiot? There's a monster right in front of me. <laughs> how about now, idiot? So Jido felt that if he had said that aloud, the second blast would come even quicker than the last. So he kept it to himself. Mental expletives stirred in his mind from paralysis to near panic. Oh god. Just looking at the structure that Ferris wheel is doing something to me. <laughs> Just all the different lines going in different directions. This response came not from confidence, however. Someday, out of the blue. Someone is going to kill me. Well, it may have seemed like a baseless belief to hold. Oh, this flashes back to when he was getting anxious in the city. On the way back, it all built up to this here. So, like, which of these things is going to kill me? Oh, the class president that I fucking vouched for. Cool. Oh, but now that I think about it, murders happen all the time in cities. I should have remembered. Again. You break the rules, you get he... killed. It's clear to me now. He's not like. Yeah, he's, he's not like tears concerned. He's just like, ah, right! Duh! Don't. Don't. That is not necessarily me putting that、yeah. in there on purpose. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I realized that after I said it. I was like, oh no, wait, she's not doing it intentionally. To Sojiro, the situation seemed to be too perfectly aligned with his inexperienced understanding that the city was a coldly pragmatic place. As far as he was concerned in this moment, being killed by a classmate was not something to be so surprised by. In a society where murder was possible, he knew he was able to accept this sort of situation as natural. Of virtually no concern was the series of events that had led to Alko's aggression towards him. The only thing that truly confused him was Alko's blue fireball. It's like, now hold on. Murder, I can understand. But magic. magic. <laughs> Sojiro swallowed with an audible gulp. Anyone who may not have been watching, it was the response of a victim paralyzed by fear. So, you got a yoyakuri k a s t e k r e t o n e I'm just imagining a kitten shaking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, you do finally get it. Oku a kataranaikido. I'm all out of words. So I think it's time you died. Oh, that's almost exactly what Lancer said. It's similar to what Lancer said before killing Shiro. Isn't it? Yep. Wrong place, wrong time. So、many I could go. <laughs> I could go on about how Magecraft has to stay hidden. That doesn't really have anything to do with you. All you need to know is that you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it was me who killed you. God, just that self like. Taking responsibility. Yeah. It's very important to her that every action she does is hers. She makes for kind of a shit Magus. <laughs> Doesn't she? Oh my god, look at that. 
done talking, Alko once again lifted her right arm. This game is beautiful. There is a hum like a machine. Blue light began to revolve around her arm, beneath her sleeve. This is taking longer than last time, leading Sajiro to believe that it was going to be much stronger than the attack that was still scorching the wall behind him. The realization caused his panic to heighten. I'll heal the church. No, wait. It's not about me having to die. Or the fact that the monster that that night was actually Aozuki. Or even whether she's a part of the church. It's not about any of that. His thoughts became jumbled. His heart pounded, pounded like a hammer. This is no time to be standing still. He was not even sure if the girl in that. front it's of him was not fucking dying. But... Really human. And more importantly, even if he could accept the events unfolding before him, when all was said and done. <laughs> oh my god! I love him! <laughs> Wait, it's wrong to kill people. You gotta, you gotta try saying that a little more forcefully, just a bit. Wait, it's wrong to kill people. Like, say it like she doesn't know it. And Wait, like, this is it's his It's wrong his to kill bit. people. There you go. Now, one last time, louder. Wait, it's wrong to kill people. There you go. <laughs> I love this! <laughs> I love this! I love this! It's wrong to kill people! Oh my fucking. I love Fahoya! <laughs> Because sometimes, like, that perspective is just so powerful, isn't it? <laughs> the perspective of the innocent. Just that simple fucking little bit of... Oh, you don't actually understand jack shit. You're not wrong, but you don't understand anything. <laughs> he wasn't wrong! <laughs> True. He weren't. Oh, it's, a, it's a great line! It's a great line! I love Mahoyo! This menu. No, I didn't. I was looking at the picture. Okay. I've not gotten a single menu this entire stream and I'm proud of myself. Even if it was a fact of life in the city, Sojiro was not about to lie down and die. <laughs> Don't you think I know that? No, it's, it's should be. Uh, don't you think I know that? There you don't, go. Don't, no, <clears throat> that was hold on. That was terrible. Don't you think I know that? Look at that CG too, or a sprite. It's all sprites, right? It's all yeah, sprites. it's all sprites. It's always wait. has been. Wait. <laughs> Just wait. Sojiro's so scream, still entirely oblivious, was just the thing to invoke Alko's full wrath. Oh! Holy shit! Come on, Sojiro! I'm not gonna try doing screams. <laughs> okay, you don't have to. Uh, at some point I will, but not tonight because it heats my body up and I'm already barely on the edge of okay on heat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you are pretty hot, that's true. Hey! I love you! Hi! Hi, Meryl! What's up? It does! It does look like a revolver! Hello? Wait, how many bullets? Were there, were there nine of them? Were there nine of them? No, it was four. I know, I'm kidding. <laughs> four bullet revolver. Given to her by her grandfather. Something something the fourth dress. <laughs> And Hanazawa is the solo equivalent. <laughs> it's happening again. <laughs> the fourth dress. <laughs> <laughs>
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog. What was the old, the old quote? Shadow the Hedgehog is the fourth dress, and Eggman is going to wear him or something. I don't remember. <laughs> Our old theories are weird as Something fuck. Like oh, because uh, it's made. No yeah, no, I see, I see that now. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> oh, go fire a barrage of blue magical bullets. In an instant, Sojiro dashed into the shadows behind him, into the entrance of the House of Mirrors. I'm just remembering the one time I actually voice acted a scream. And it got cut out completely. Yes, it was like an extremely like visceral like scream that I put everything into, and even like dissociated a bit going into, and it was just cut out completely. And I'm like, okay, cool. Poor girl. We should redo that somewhere. Maybe. Yes, yes, that's it, that's it, yep, that scene. Yeah, yeah. Remember when they just completely changed the tone of it in the DNA? <laughs> that was horrible. Because <laughs> that scene was really good. Not good. In an instant, Sojuro dashed into the shadows behind him, into the entrance of the House of Mirrors. For anyone that doesn't know, they turned that into a comedy scene in the Dean adaptation. <laughs> what the heck was that? He darted fe feverishly down the halls. Or hall. I mean, I guess there's halls. I don't know. After a mere few feet, he was left completely out of breath. By the way, stream title easily. It's wrong to kill people. <laughs> yep. This was due to his shock at seeing yet another attack, fiercer than the first, that he'd never seen in his life. And because he couldn't shake the thought that if he had moved even a second later, he would be dead. It does. <laughs> he could not afford to stop. The sound of merciless footsteps closed in behind him. I bought myself some time. Maybe here I'll be able to figure out something. He threw everything into his legs as he sprinted. A straight, narrow passage about 60 feet long connected the entrance to the main lobby. At this rate, if he could just make it to the lobby, he was sure he would be able to find as many hiding spots as he needed. Gotta get to the stairs. Gotta get to the stairs. If I can just make it to the stairs, then I can just. Aw, fuck! <laughs> he wouldn't swear, though. Thank God. He does sometimes. I guess a little bit. It... That's true. Uh, people who. Innocent people don't necessarily not swear. I can think of one. Yep. Very safe fuck. Yeah, very safe he arrives in a large open space. <laughs> dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> oh god, I, I want to try and not break a hundred, but it's happening. This oh, yeah. is the first floor lobby. Anyway, there were three passageways. One led to the basement floor. One connected to the first floor maze. The other was set a set of stairs leading to the second floor. Sojiro did not particularly care which one he chose, so, trusting his intuition, he made a run for the first floor maze when... It... Oh my Ouch. god, it's literally like... Ouch. It's literally the scene. Uh-huh. Right down to... He, he tried to go down a stairway, but it didn't work. This time, though, there's no choices here where I can get my memory erased. <laughs> God, that was a horrifying ending. Yeah. Good shit. Nos is good. Nos is a good writer. I do often wonder what this fan would have been like with choices.
He smacked his head into a transparent wall. Kagami. Uh, Amir? Eh. Mendo de Kido. So they're not a fair de show. Oh, because he doesn't know. That's right. Because he doesn't know. That's right. It's annoying. But I guess this makes things fair. He doesn't know. Oh. Wait. Oh, doesn't know either. The chaser and the chased are on equal ground. A somehow cheerful voice echoed in his direction. There was no need for Sojiro to even turn around. In the very same mirror he had crashed into, he could see Elko Aozaki's figure slowly approaching. Oh, wow! You should know, I sealed off the first floor oh exit deeper inside. Physically. Not with the bounded field. She's just there. She's just there, do you see her? <laughs> yep. やりすぎて封鎖っていうより瓦礫どっちでもいっかとにかく下手に出口に近づくと崩落に巻き込まれるから生き埋めが嫌なら近寄らないことねイズ calling on a seal going too far maybe plugged or buried works either way if you get too close you'll be swallowed by a cave in I recommend keeping your distance if you don't want to be buried alive. That's horrified. <sighs> Panicked by the impending footsteps, Sojiro groped for the wall. He could see the stairs to the second floor. He did not understand what Alko had meant earlier, but he at least knew that the first floor was not going to save him. Face. It would save me a lot of trouble if he just died that way, though. I'm just telling myself through all of this that he's gonna be okay. He's gonna be okay. Oh. The cleanup is much easier for accidental deaths. He's gonna be fine. He's gonna be fine, okay? <laughs> Behind him was a creature beyond words. As she continued her idle taunting, she lifted her right arm ostentatiously. Ostentatiously? Ostentatiously, I was close. Oh, look at the circuits there. Look at that. That's so fucking cool. Yup. It's so cool how you can see the circuits to the, the clothing. I actually kind of wanted to do that with uh, this VTuber model, but I couldn't figure out how. Even above her clothes, one could see some kind of strange, incongruous pattern upon her body. The veins beneath her skin. They made it seem as though something inhuman was circulating her body. Whether out of pity or repulsion, Sajida stopped for just a moment. His pursuer evaded his gaze. That wink is iconic. That Oko wink is iconic. You've noticed then? I normally hide it with ointment, but today is special. Oh, thank you! Uh, I also kind of wanted to have stuff like shine through the arms, but <laughs> like from underneath. Yeah, yeah, like underneath the clothes, but uh. I need to learn Blender, and I don't plan to do that. <laughs> God, I love the convinced spell effect though. That was actually done Again, like you... completely outside the model. Huh? You do know someone who's good with tech. Yeah, it's possible. She'd probably be up to. Up to help out. I'll make small changes, but this is the this is the big design. <laughs> yeah. Also, she hides it with ointment. That's really cool. Like, it's a really interesting thing to think about. Cause 
Magic Crest. It's called a magical crest. It's proof that I'm a mage. Also, speaking of crest, should we talk about what we want to do? Nah, later. Yeah. You see this light revolving around me, right? It's the beginning of what formed that snap. Those bullets. Your algo is so good! <laughs> Thank you. We should all think she did. Holy shit, that's insane. Her magical power seems ins like, absolutely insane compared to what we've seen so far. Like, her circuits are so intense. I'm feeling pretty good today. And I've never felt more confident in how to use my magical energy efficiently. I think I'm good for another 30 bullets or so. Perhaps she was on an emotional high, for her voice had become frighteningly friendly. <laughs> oh, look at his face! The substance of the conversation could not have been any more unsettling, however. <laughs> oh my god! I love him! <laughs> Yeah. She didn't get the crest. I don't understand a thing you're saying, Aosuke. I, I just, I, I still can't get over the it's wrong to kill people line. It's so fucking good. You don't? I'm telling you that I have 30 more shots in the tank. <laughs> She's like, but why? But why, though? <laughs> if you can escape before I use them up, it's your win. For today, that is. Wow. Oh my god! <laughs> you mean I have to do this tomorrow too? Or you mean I have to do this tomorrow too? So did I make it? Like He's so weird. It's definitely normal to have mages coming out to kill you. <laughs> Alko's expression creased into a scowl at his behavior. Although he was panicking, it seemed that deep down, he still did not feel the full weight of the crisis. She knew he still didn't get it. I said my piece. Of course Three it's time is over. I also assumed it was I said my piece. But the other <laughs> word for peace. I don't know why. That's adorable. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> it is trash talk! It's mage trash talk! I love these two so much! I love them so fucking much! I may still have some trash talk left in me, but... Well, there's never enough time to get it all off my chest anyway. Just give up already. It appeared that Alko had prepared this theoretical dialogue ahead of time! <laughs> Theatrical. The, the, theatrical. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, Not she's acting. Because mm -hmm. it's the only way. It's the only way. She's playing the part of the mage. And it's so fucking good. Not to allow her opponent time for fut futile pleading, but to give him time to curse her. His killer. Such forthrightness. She wants to be absolved by his hatred. Yep. She wants to. She wants to feel less like she's killing a kitten, 
Or I guess more like it at the same time. Because it's just like... Wants... She just wants him to hate her for doing this as much as she hates herself. She, yep, she doesn't want him to just stand there and not understand what's going because on. She, she has to be a hateable being to do this, right? She has to be a mage, but... If she's not a hateable being, then she doesn't have to do this. And when she realizes that, she probably wouldn't and be that, yes. To. Yeah, she, and also she wants every action to be her own, yeah. That too, yeah. Agency is really important for Alka. Such forthrightness was her mo modus operandi. With this victim, however, it was not going to going as she had hoped. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Shall we begin the hunt? Her voice was void of emotion, and her eyes ruthless as they bored into her prey. This time, Sojudo finally accepted that he was going to die. Sojudo is the hardest person for her to kill, huh? Oh, yeah. Silent is the dread. It, stopped, it stepped into the remnants of a dream that had long since seen no visitors. There was no wind this night, nor a soul to be seen. Still, it heard the echoes from within, clasped its hands together, and grinned. Its form, with hands clasped, resembled that of a budding tulip. The bearing of this artificial flower reflected in the cloudy mirror of the ticket attendant's office next to the gate. Next to it stood a display board corroded by years upon years of rust. Number of visitors today? Two. That reflection. Number of today. The board had graffiti crudely scrawled up top one of the words. It was replaced with deaths. The records board had long ago fallen into disrepair. After taking a full 10 seconds to digest what it was looking at, it made its own revision. Number of visitors today, three. Number of deaths today, one. Three. After appending this number with an index finger, she smiled like a flower. Then she began to walk towards the source of the sound. Is that red hair? Oh it shit, I blinked. It had been ten minutes since this rhapsody had begun to echo from the House of Mirrors. The amusement park's entrance returned to as it was before. Solus. In the end, even if Sojiro had been the luckiest man alive, there was no way he should have been able to escape. The question, however, was how much of this was by design, and how much was sheer confidence. Even Elko who had made all the arrangements, had no answer. Indeed, there were only three things she could say. 
It was taking longer than expected. He was putting up more of a resistance than she had anticipated, and that choosing the House of Mirrors was a mistake. She had really screwed the pooch on this one. The, lo the location itself was an excellent choice, as the House of Mirrors is a perfect was perfect as a hunting ground, but seeing her own incompetence reflected in the mirrors was beginning to grate on her. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidence. Okay. Ah! I could do that one. Huh? Oh. Huh? But yeah, what was going on over there? It's just Toko? this innocent little. Oh! It said there were three people here, though. Toko? Wait, or Hana's. You just wanted to be. Okay, but last time that happened. <laughs> last time that you happened. Admit it. Last time that happened, I was. I was actually right that time. To admit it that you wanted it to be Toko. She's cool. And honestly, uh, in terms of like characters I'm interested in, in knowing more about, she's up there. The moment Alko's right arm began to glow, Sojuna made a beeline for the staircase in front of him. A strobing series of blue flashes hit the room behind him. The hunter calmly followed her prey, and the prey desperately ran for his life up the stairs. Oh my god, that smile! Look at that smile! <laughs> Just what the doctor ordered! Just what the doctor ordered. I love these two so much. I love them. We can't very well let the best laid plans go to waste now, can we? In stark contrast to Sojiro's frenzied escape, Alko walked briskly, briskly up the stairs. Briskly. She elected to not run after her prey in order to maintain a set distance. As she lacked confidence in her accuracy, the hardest thing for her to deal with would be if he charged right at her and went down fighting. But at a distance of 30 feet or so, he posed no threat. By the time her prey drew near, she could fire 10 shots and hit with at least four of them. Their positioning just a moment ago hadn't been ideal. At that distance, in a space that open, if he flanked and rushed her, there was a chance, however small, that it could turn into a fist fight. Currently, Alko's best weapon was the bullets from her right arm. If she was going to capitalize on that advantage, it was in her best interest to not close the gap between them. If there was a good time to approach, it was only after her prey had become exhausted and lost the will to continue. Would she pierce his leg? Shoot him in the back? Or perhaps, would he just give up after losing himself in the labyrinth? The hunt would end when her target sustained some sort of injury and became unable to run. Just thinking about drawing, like, that many reflections. Oh god. On Sojudo's end, he could barely bite back on screaming as he bolted through the maze. Even running in a straight line had become difficult, much less searching for an exit. Ow! I felt that. Oh, yeah, there. Ow! The corridor stretched out far before him, or so the mirrors blocking the path had made it seem. Panicked, he made a turn to the right. Ow! <laughs> I keep reflexively saying ow and creating the line before it's there. You're sinking up. Yep. Clutching his head with his right arm, such a led with his left, groping through the air to see whether a wall was there or not. He dove down the hall to the left, narrowly dodging the bullets targeting his life. <sighs> 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 
Urged on by the sound of approaching footsteps, he ran without thinking. That last one was close. A hair closer than... A hair closer would have meant his life. He caught the odor of burnt hair from the back of his neck. He was very lucky. Or perhaps very unlucky. If he were actually lucky, he would not be in the situation in the first place. The second floor of the House of Mirrors is structured like a giant spiral. It's Paradox giving spiral. so much fucking near Automata vibes in the, the fucking, uh, or Automata, whatever you want to call it, fucking vibes in the, uh, the soundtrack right now. Is it? I'm very interested in yep. here then, because this is great. I love this. It's gonna be rough. For you. <laughs> near? Yeah. Yeah. It ruined le well, I'm left, starting from outside wall. From the outside wall. I just feel this wound and wound are spelled the same. Yep. That's Eventually. um that's that's a true fact about the English language. Mm-hmm. Like, I obviously I've always known it, but it's like <laughs> sometimes you're just like, oh, right. Eventually, it would lead to a dead end. The more he tried to escape, the more concern I'm concerned, that's why. Cornered he would become. As though he were trapped in a twisted guillotine. <sighs> he stifled his stifled screams threatened to leak out his complaints. No matter what he did, he was going to be killed. All of his struggling merely served to prolong the inevitable. Oh, look at that slow motion shot there. Yet he ran. No matter how many mirrored walls he rammed himself into, he ran. I just want to see if it goes off the screen or not. Just... It'll stop. Even after crashing so hard that his forehead bled, and he saw stars, he ran. Oh! oh holy shit! Pain shot through, through him. At, pain shot through him at every turn. The more frantically he ran, the more intensely he smashed into the invisible walls. His body began to understand this rule, and begged him not to run anymore. <laughs> it's just like, conditioning him. <gasps> His breath was already ragged after sprinting a couple hundred feet. No matter how he thought about it, this was not normal. This was way too crazy. This is all just a bad joke. If he turned around now, she would apologize him to him for taking it too far. His mind had gotten blank. His body continued to slam into the mirrors again and again. His feet slowed as they began to believe that perhaps it was really all a joke. But then... <gasps> he felt a chill. No! Such a... of death upon his neck. <gasps> Wait. That's that's where the bandages are. They'll protect him! The bandages will protect him! <laughs> it would not be an exaggeration to say that Sojudo knew this kind of terrible chill all too well. Ever since he had arrived on the city, in the city, he had come face to face with more than one with more than one or two near-death experiences. For someone who did not understand city life, his present predicament was not unlike when he experienced the traffic on the street or the commuter rush on the station platform. He was far from an innocent- Just that sense of certain death around him. Yep. He was far from an innocent babe unable to comprehend life or fear. Rather, everything he had ever known became irrelevant when he was flung into a completely different cultural sphere. Even society's promises of safety, something urban, urbanities took for granted, 
For threats unknown. Urbanites? Urbanites? Urbanites. Yeah, like people that live in urban society. My brain just didn't process that one correctly. So, he was used to this already. Though, if you were to be honest, he was dissatisfied with some things. Things superfluous, things superfluous to necessity. This world is overflowing with valuelessness or valueless things, and they were all dangerous in so some much. way. <laughs> Don't even. <laughs> Even the everyday necessities sold at the convenience store were there, were, as far as he was concerned, amazing tools. Civilization had raised the standard of living so high that it had numbered humanity's sense of or num, yeah, numbed, humanity's sense of danger. The city's constant pursuit of wealth and convenience was a poison to a country boy like Sojida. did not have the capacity to accept these conveniences. Like like earlier when he was talking about the bicycle. Yeah. That was possible for such that it was possible for such conveniences to easily and suddenly be misused and cause unintended accidents that had always made him anxious. Cars are terrifying. Oh but why? He had to wonder why he was even here. Ah. How ironic. It took the real threat of death to finally make him realize, like a divine revelation, what he failed to understand it until now. He'd always had to expect the unexpected. Near-death experiences were more common than one might think. To begin with, safety was something that came at a price. Being alive meant that the opposite was always lurking around the corner. That's a good line. His life is just analogous to a mage's life to begin with. <laughs> it was just like a street light at night. When the sun rose, its illumination would naturally disappear. Another barrage of strange projectiles whizzed mercilessly by him. He, recall he recalled in the back of his mind the charred remains of someone at the hands of that blue flame two nights prior. Somehow, the situation reminded him of a horse being led by a dangling carrot. For now. He lifted his head and continued to run through the labyrinth. But for what purpose? <sighs> Though he knew the pain in his chest was very real, he felt disconnected from it. The night sky visible through the skylight was a muddy ultramarine. No longer resembling the one he knew. and managed to calm himself. Sojiro began to laugh in despair, as though something rather precious had been broken. Everything had become meaningless anyway. Oh, look at all the different alcos there. Yep. Even so. His legs somehow made their way before the sight of her reflection in the mirror. Just death approaches around every corner. Like a game of cat and mouse, Sergio thread through the labyrinth of mirrors. Then, after four minutes, that strangely unreal tension ended. The ninth shot of blue light hit inches away from him. It exploded the moment it made impact, launching Soj Sojido onto the opposite wall. Sojido. 
of all the fire he had taken thus far, the shot, indisputably, brought him the closest to death. <laughs> Groaning, he collapsed onto the floor. His back was on fire with pain. He was not bleeding, and was lucky he could even still scream. Yet, his body refused to move. Physically and mentally, he still had something to spare. The pain was not so bad that it was preventing him from standing up. It was just that there was a skylight above him, and he could glimpse the dark of the night sky beyond. The feeling that overcame him was a raw, selfish bout of grief. It was just so cruel. To have to stare at that for the remainder of whatever short life he had left. So did his ragged breath slowed. For all intents and purposes, he had given up. He had given up running away from the sound of pursuing footsteps. Perhaps even the problem at the root of everything. Well, at least it was Aosuki who got to kill me. So Jiro Shizuki felt things that, in any other circumstance, he would never feel. Incidentally, without exaggeration or embellishment, this is the only mistake he had ever made in his entire life. Staring vacantly into the night sky above, So Jiro listened as the footsteps drew nearer. Give up. You give up? You give up? It was the closest her voice had ever been to him. That's a good line. Perhaps feeling that he... Perhaps feeling that he really had given up, she approached his collapsed form. In the dark, mirror-lined corridors, he could not make out. Or in the dark, mirror-lined corridor... He could not make out her expression. Without a word, Sojuro raised his eyes to meet his murderer. I suppose if you don't care, you don't have to ask. You really do throw me off. Most people would ask me why I'm going to kill them right about now. Oko spoke from within the shadows. His eyes widened in bewilderment. Now that she had mentioned it, he realized that he would have been the obvious that it would have been the obvious question to ask. He had more or less picked up on the fact that he was being killed for learning some secret, but it was human nature to want to know more. So so no, that's. That makes sense. That makes sense, now that you mention it. A simple affirmation. His face is a mixture of resignation and a forlorn forlonging, for longing. He thought for a moment before. Demo But you don't have to say anything. I don't want to hear it. 
he responded in a mature, subdued voice. His response was clear, rather clear, rather gallantly so. So? I see. I'm still going to kill you. Are you afraid of dying? She's a Of course I'm scared. It'll probably hurt. His first his face turned dry as he objected. To which Alko frowned. As nonchalant as he could be, he was honest about his feelings. So <laughs> Of course that would be scary. I would be scared too, you know. Sorry, though. You'll just need to deal with it. God, just that. Oh, that doesn't happen. It's okay if you call me a monster. That's exactly what I am right now. She needs to hear that from him. So it's the same as you. It's the same as you. So if you don't have to die, then you can kill me. I guess in that way, I'm just like you. I don't have what you would call normal morals. Helps when I need to murder someone. Sajiro's fingers twitched in response to her indifferent tone. As to say that, despite having given up on it just about everything, his body could not let those words slide. Let's go. <laughs> I love him. Murder is wrong, you know? We went through this. I know that already. Elko raised her right hand. The light from the crest illuminated her face. It goes without saying that her expression was unchanged. She hey, was Pars. not crying. Here for the hey, death Pars. of the ghost? No. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. Murder is wrong. Definitely. Alko's, like, uh, inner humanity is going to come out and overpower all of her sense of major majoriness, and everyone's gonna live happily ever after. Stop it. Mero. Mero, how could you say that? That... That is the single... <laughs> That is the chat <laughs> message of all time. That is the chat message of all time. Beautiful. It causes me so much pain that I'm going to like print it out and put it on my wall. What? What are you, Jordan Peterson? <laughs> Wait, does he do that? That's weird. No. Yeah, he's like hyper afraid of like communism, so he's filled his house with like. Stalinist memorabilia. Anyway, that's not important yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, I was like, wait, what? She was not crying, nor was she smiling. She was a young woman who had excised her feelings. Deal with it was another thing that Sojiro could not let slide. Sojiro could read on Alko's face that she was not herself. Yup. She was in pain, and to a degree, he had never seen in her. She doesn't want to be that person. She wants to be her. Sorry. Or sorry. But I guess I do have something to say. 
ここまで悲壮感を盛り上げておいてやっぱり逃げるなんてのは却下よ What is it? <clears throat> What is it? But don't think you can trick me into letting you go by making me feel bad. That's the thing. They... That's, not... That's not it. He unconsciously smiled at Alko's ruthless counter and breathed a sigh of relief. He had misread the pain he saw in her face. This is the same Alko. Sejiro laughed out loud in genuine joy, a laugh that most other people would have taken as an insult. I'm starting to regret letting you say your piece. Or should I take that attempt to make fun of me as just that? The atmosphere here is so fucking good. Yeah, so the crossed arms of the crossed. So... <gasps> Wait, no way. No, I'm not laughing at you. I was just wondering if that person over there was a friend of yours, Elsiki. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Toko, but. What if it was the vice president? Toby Maru, the true uh, puppeteer behind everything, who was framing Toko. <laughs> Just like, Sono G, are you okay? <laughs> You've been a perfect puppet, Sono G. But seriously, though, it's, it's, yeah. it's definitely Toko. It has to be Toko. Out of nowhere. So you don't find it behind Toko? Yes, 100% it's Toko. Unless that's what the game wants me to think. Mm. Huh? <laughs> oh my god, her face! Huh? Huh? Alko thought that it must have been that <laughs> old, overused distraction technique. Yeah, I was wondering. Is it that? If this had been a hey, look over there. comedy act, this would be the part where she gave him a, a whack with a paper fan. But after giving it a second thought, she realized that Jiro didn't have the capacity for understanding old or even old <laughs> It's true. Anta, <gasps> oh my god, it is. It's Toko, isn't Are it? Are you? It's Toko. Perhaps his honest disposition had been to his benefit. Without thinking. No way. Without thinking, Alko gave in to her curiosity and turned her gaze towards the direction which his finger was pointed. And there, 